Welcome back in, everyone, from one goodbye. We will miss Mercedes Martinez so much to another. Breaking development tonight in sports. Coming from Yuma High School, Bo, Bo Seibel has resi resigned Excuse me, as head football coach for the Yuma Criminals. Seibel submitted his resignation to Yuma High just this afternoon, stepping away after three seasons following the Criminals' best season in nearly three decades and first winning season season since 2009. Seibel confirms he will be headed back home to the Midwest to continue his coaching and teaching career. Now despite a 7-3 record in 2022, the criminal season ended on a sour note by being left out of the 3A playoff bracket, but it ended nice and well with a win and a statement provided to us just a few hours ago from Seibel. He said, quote, the program is in good hands and we have taken the steps in the right direction. We have talked about growth as a unit and what it takes to move forward in life. Unfortunately, my time at Yuma High is coming to an end and my path has taken me in another direction, end quote. Seibel went on to say that he wishes the best for his coaches and players and will definitely hold on to the memories they have all created. Now, Scott, um, now just to, to, to touch on that, you know, a tough blow for Yuma, but at least the Seibel era ending on a good note. Coach even telling us that he got to spend the last couple of days with the team, talking about it, reminiscing about all the great moments they made together, especially this year. Great moment for those seniors that they have, but uh, kind of devastating news for those juniors now that are right. kind of left to pick up the pieces in that 7-3 and three season. So, But uh, there's a lot of leadership there. Those seniors are leaving those juniors and sophomores with a taste of what it's like. So hopefully uh, that'll right. be enough. And with a new coaching staff coming in there, I know they uh, told you and told me some names that they'd like to see right. fill those shoes, but we'll have to wait and see what happens it's kind of like christmas for us to see right. who's going to slide into that role yeah but uh, w what coach seibel did there for a couple of a uh, couple of seasons there in short time he turned that thing around uh held up people accountable both uh, in the classroom and on the field so that's a culture that hopefully we'll get to see continue with this coaching staff coming and we wish the best mm -hmm. to coach both seibel and his future endeavors of course but now we got some highlights to get to from tonight so there are still sports going on despite the news out of yuma to bob mcclendon court at the palace staying on the campus of yuma high the criminals looking for just their second win as the Cibola Raiders were in town looking back, looking for back-to-back -back wins. Starting in the second quarter, Crims down by four. Here's Alex Montijo seeing the pass from a mile away. He's going from L.A. to New York, coast to coast for the land. Crims down two now. Later on, we're tied up. Max Pacheco, a criminal and a thief, picks off the pocket of Jonah Ponder. Down the court, finds a wide-open Montijo. Down low for the bucket. Yuma now in the lead. It's a two-point game again. Raiders would then head to the... The Raiders would head locker room by two. Down two here in the third. Some nice ball movement from Cibola. Leads to Derek Stanley getting a nice look in the paint. We're all tied up. Crims would then take a four-point lead. Max Harmony in some trouble. And the basket splits the defenders. A wide open Jared Arias there for the three. That would make it a one-point game. Despite a solid effort, though, from the Crims, it would be the Raiders that would hang on to a tight one. They take it. 59-51, the final Raiders now 8-4 as the Crims drop to 1-5. and five. Now we glide four miles over to Cibola for the girls' side of this crosstown battle in the hardwood. Sean Jones and the Lady Crims visiting the Lady Raiders, both trying to bounce back from a loss. Second quarter, Raiders up by 8. Isabella Molina gets around two defenders, takes the short pull-up. Jay getting the shooter's roll for two to go up by 10. On the other end, Belinda Grady is trying to make a play for the Crims, but she's blocked by Sierra Baumhauer. Here go the Raiders. Raiders in transition, Molina up to Val Valeria Robles, who kisses it off the glass, and then turning defense into offense again. Robles is going to pick Alyssa Franco's pocket. Baumhauer up to Molina, all alone for the easy two. The Raiders start to run away with it, up by 16. Cibola would take care of the criminals, 78-18 for their ninth win of the year. Now staying at Cibola, but taking a turn out to Raider Field for boys soccer. The Raiders riding the high of a 1-0 win over Kofa on Tuesday with Chandler in town late in the second half. Tied at one. Last game's hero, Miguel Valenzuela works it from the corner and he crosses it into the box, but the Wolves keeper Jorge Camacho reaches in, punches it away. 
Nathaniel Claudio can't get there in time. It's cleared out. Se final seconds. Last chance for Chandler on the corner. That's a laser, but there's a collision here. The Nat ball squirts away. That sends this to overtime. In the first overtime period, Osvaldo lost her in space, but he gets tripped up here. Goes down. The whistle comes out. That's a foul. It leads to a free kick from Claudio. The best chance of the overtime for Cebola, but the laser goes right to the chest of the keeper. Final seconds of the second overtime. Cebola throws it in. There's a clutter with the ball. It's final Finally cleared out by the Wolves, and that is all she wrote. This one ends in a 1-1 tie. Sabola's third tie of the early season. They're now 3-1-3 on the year. Now something to check out, calling on all softball players in Imperial Valley. This is your chance to get scouted. A prospect camp from ages 13 to 18 will be taking place on Tuesday, December 20th. Calexico's own Amber Flores. Hey, we did a story on here earlier uh, this year, a softball coach at Seminole State College in Oklahoma, coming back home, will be evaluating players along with other college coaches. And on Monday, the day before that, softball players ages 6 to 12 are encouraged to join the kitty camp. Both events will be taking place at the Water Plant Softball Fields. And you can go ahead and scan that QR code right there to reserve your spot. For more information, head on over to our website at kymay.com. That is all the time we have for sports.